Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the podcast F1 deserves. I'm Ollie Peer and this is the FF1S Preview. We'll be bringing you everything you need to know about the forthcoming Chinese Grand Prix, but not before we've heard from you, our devoted and financially generous listeners. If you'd like to quiz us on the latest F1 goings on, or about anything else, to be honest, then head over to our socials and ping us your questions. That's all to come. Here comes Listener's Corner, and it's littered with bits of Williams's budget and Daniel Ricciardo's career. So, we've got some questions. Who wants to go first? Uh, I'll pick one. Go on, uh, then. Mm, at random, I'm going to... This is going to make no sense on the audio podcast, but I'm twizzling my hand and I'm pointing at the screen, and it says, Phil Pitt Matthews, do Williams have any duct tape on that... Sp- duct tape? Duct tape on that <laughs> spreadsheet. They're going to need to keep repairing these chassis. Yeah, I mean we've touched this, touched on this uh, oh, in the shit. last episode, haven't we? The, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to work out if it's incompetence or bad luck that they just keep having massive accidents. With yeah, with with Logan Sargent, it's clearly incompetence. But Albans had a couple of smashes as well now. Yeah, but it's like that philosophy thing, isn't it? When I say to you, don't think of a tree, the first thing you think of is a tree. And if you say to a Williams driver, right, whatever you do, don't crash. Yeah. <laughs> Crash. Yeah, okay. Got it you. wasn't. It wasn't his fault, though, was it? I mean, he. Uh, this, uh, the album one. This no, it wasn't. So this this was bad luck. The one, the last one he did, where he he crashed and then stole Sergeant's car. That what was his fault. Mm. And Sergeant's crash. That was his fault. We get to a point in the end of the year where like they're going to go to the Williams garage in the in the build up, and it's just going to be like up on some bricks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's getting to that point because was it was it Sergeant? Because uh, he didn't Sergeant have a crash in practice this weekend? I've lost track of all Sergeant. He practices. did have a little bit of a crash. And apparently he had the car that had all the upgrades and they only had one set of them. So before the race even happened, he destroyed all the upgrades and they had to go back to the old shit that they already mm-hmm. knew wasn't very good. But so I'd like this. It's not... <laughs> You, well, how far like... back can they go with the old shit? Could they just I think they're running an FW14B from... and they're <laughs> being disqualified for running active suspension. This is what I mean. They must have one knocking about somewhere. It's, like, it's going like to be like that movie Battleship where, they, where the old boys at Pearl Harbor got one of the old ships and sailed off to defeat the enemy. They're just going to go to the local museum and find, like, Alan Jones's old car from 1980. So, this, is, this goes back to my favourite fact about... Old Formula One cars is the the Williams the the ninety two one that one the FW one B whatever you said um, FW fourteen B that's the one they can only start that car with a computer it's one of the first kind of yes. computerized ECU car things and the only computer it will work with is like some old and remember it was nineteen ninety two so this is like before Windows ninety five it's like a Windows like typey typey computer three point one maybe yeah. yeah. <laughs> And they don't make any computers that were so. So part of the Williams, like they call it the archive, the, of the, the heritage, or something. Thing. The heritage. That's the word. Part of their job is they've got to keep. They've got like two or three of these old laptops, and if these laptops break, <laughs> they can't ever start this car again because it's too complicated. <laughs> because when they were building it, they don't go. Oh, I'll tell you what. Let's build a car that we can start twenty times this year, and then, or you know, hundred times this year, whatever. And then after after this year, we don't have to bother with it again. We don't they, they they don't build in. Oh, what if in twenty years, Sebastian Vettel wants to buy it? <laughs> Which he does. <laughs> he, all of them. Now yeah. I've I've heard this repeatedly, and I I Sorry. find it kind of weird to believe. Sorry, I'm not I'm not dissing your story. I I, I had heard it before, but it, it, you told it beautifully, and I Thanks. keep thinking like, how fucking difficult is it? A, to just put an emulator on a modern computer. That just does the same thing as an. It's like, are you, what what possible reason could there be that you have to have that actual old computer to run the car? Surely you could oh. just run old software on a new computer. You're actually not. You're actually showing that you don't know anything about computers, Phil. Yeah, <laughs> but the other thing is, <laughs> how fucking difficult is it in a Formula very, One it's company? Very difficult when you build incredibly complicated motor cars. How fucking difficult is it just put an, put an ignition in it? Just put a little key in the back. Why not? Just, <laughs> you can have remote start. It's not fucking difficult. This it's is an old Williams. car. Nobody, nobody. It doesn't. You know, all these little tenths of a second don't matter anymore. People are just pootling up and down the Goodwood. No, no, speed. no, no, no. Come on. This is Williams we're talking about. You know full well if they went, if they came in and went right, we need to start up the F14 WFB, whatever it's called. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you and there'll be it. a guy. There'll be a guy. One of those kind of brown Monty Python coats. You know, those kind of like like yes. the, the the 
kind of coat that the, the open all hours like, coats yeah that kind of thing yeah. and it would be like oh i know where the keys are and it'll go to some back room that's you know a, a t- switch a light on and it'll take 10 seconds for the light to come on there'll be cobwebs everywhere and it'll get creep around at the end there'll be a drawer and it'll be rummaging around in the drawer for keys and then the guy waiting is going to be young and be like we got sebastian vettel waiting here we must start his car and he's like hang on hang on hang on and then he gets it he finds the key and he goes this is it and he uses that key to unlock a cupboard <laughs> which is full of more keys and then after like an hour he goes oh, we got it. I lost yeah. it. <laughs> then they'll find the old Knights Templar at the back of the thing. Yeah. The Holy Grail and the key to the car. I've forgotten <sighs> the question. Uh, do they have any yep. duct tape? Yeah, they've I probably got some duct tape. Don't. Sorry. I, don't I, start, I started shouting. I was about to say I don't care, but I realise I say that a lot, and the truth is I do care. It is true. Terry. If it's about, if it's about Williams and, and the early 90s, you definitely care. I love it. The FFF1SB. What's that called? That's the one. That was our project that never got off the ground. Yeah. Pick a question, Terry. Any question. Eddie Bear 78 says, fuck, marry, kill, Verstappen, Horner, or Marco. Oh, my God. I think this is very Christ. unfair because Horner's going to make you fuck him. And well, in fairness, he's got lots of practice, so he'd probably be quite good at it. <laughs> yeah, Horner's going to. Just, we haven't got a choice. It's basically marry, it's, kill, it's, Verstappen it's, or Marco. Uh, sport, uh, no, uh, what's her name? Uh, Ginger Spice, he's had. Uh, most of his staff, apparently. Allegedly. Ooh. Are we crossing line? I feel like we've crossed a the line there. Is that a line? I feel that's Allegedly. A line. The lawyers are telling me that there's no suggestion that he's slept with uh, any of the other Spice Girls. Well. <laughs> Me and Ollie are just going to go quiet now. Yeah, I'm not saying anything. I, I, the quieter we get, the worse it looks for you. I can't, I can't afford to... I wouldn't want to marry him. Get into battle with, with that which, Frankfurter which, which cocked cost... wanker. <laughs> which Verstappen are we talking about? That's a oh. crucial question. Oh, which yeah. Marco are we talking about? Is there another Marco? Wahlberg. Marco Martin, the rally driver? <laughs> Marco Wahlberg. <laughs> Marco Wahlberg. <laughs> <laughs> Marco Lamar. That's Van the only Basten. other mark I could think of. Marco Van Basten. That was a, he was a footballer, wasn't he? Yeah. Marco um, Rubio. Who's that? Did he discover America? No, he's a currency, isn't he? Is he? <laughs> he's a currency. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really think that our political spin-off podcast will do very well. <laughs> Marco Rubio's like a Republican senator, or something. right? <laughs> Kill Marco. I don't, I don't know. Ah, oh, reluctantly marry Horner. No, what? actually, fuck it. No, no, no. What am I talking about? Fuck Horner. I'll kill Horner. Kill Marco. I think reluctantly... Marry, in Hor- marry Verstappen, because he just spends all his time playing computer games. He wouldn't think, really have to bother doing anything. I no. think reluctantly and Horner go very well together. Um, no, yeah, oh, come on. You wouldn't want to no, marry... No, 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 Vers- no. I've, no. Got, I've got it. I've figured it okay, out. Cool. I would kill Horner. I'd fuck Verstappen, because it'd be over very quickly. And I would marry Marco. Wow. No. Oh, God, can you imagine? Oh, no. no. Okay, I would marry... I, I like cooking, Although it's he, fine. I'd just be the, mm, the housewife or whatever. It's all right. I would marry... It's a good life. I would kill Verstappen. Mm. I would marry Horner. Oh, man, you imagine And that. I would break him. <laughs> <laughs> like, just... I mean, you can change him, is that what you're saying? I, he, I, you don't <laughs> understand him like I do. And I would <laughs> fuck Marco on the condition... That I only have to fuck him in the eye. <laughs> you'd fuck so him you'd up. Skull, you'd skull fuck him, is what you're saying. Skull fuck it, yeah, yeah. I think that's what they call it. Oh, Christ. Good. Excellent. I, I have but, a uh, nagging feeling that Checkered Flag did this exact segment. <laughs> um, uh, let me... Oh, uh, pick one. Uh, yeah. yeah, I am going to pick one. I, I'm going to pick a, a, a simple one. Uh, Ernst De Heer. Is it finally time for Liam Lawson? Yeah. It's Liam Lawson time! <laughs> it's Liam Lawson time! <laughs> Liam, 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 Lawson, 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 Liam, 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 Liam. It's time for Liam, Liam Lawson. Lawson. Time for Liam Lawson. Time for Liam Lawson with the baseball bat. Well, that was an easy question to answer. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Is. I'm glad I chose it. Don't yes. really care where he goes. I mean, Ricardo's seat, obviously. Yeah. yeah I think. Almost certainly. Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. Mm. Great. Next question. Uh, Tristan Clayton says Is this the sort of question you want us to ask? No. Nope. No, Tristan. No, no it's not. No. But thank you for getting in touch. Yeah. Patrick Brennan says, non F one question for you. WrestleMania was on this weekend. What are your thoughts on pro wrestling? When I was I want to say eleven, maybe twelve, mm-hmm. fucking loved it. 
British Bulldog, Ultimate Warrior, Macho Man Randy Savage, The Undertaker, Paul British Bearer. Bulldog. Loved it. Absolutely you, loved it. Watched them all know? on VHS, went around my mate's house, loved it. But then I found out it wasn't real. And then I had what? absolutely oh. no interest in it whatsoever. It was Do like the spell know? was broken. Do you know what Hulk Hogan's real name is? Kenny. Bartholomew J. Simpson. Nope. Um, Colin. Terry Saunders. It's Terry. He's Terry is it really? Hogan. Is he it's Terry? Terry oh, that's good. Do you know what he, wasn't Minigan's... he wasn't christened Hulk as a baby. No. Do you know what Spike Minigan's real name was? Spike. Uh, well, I want to say Terry, but I'm not going to. Uh, Philip. It's Terry. Good <sighs> Everyone good is called Terry. What's your real name? What's your real name? Yeah. <laughs> My real name's Ollie. <laughs> That's weird. My real name's Phil. <laughs> <laughs> My real name's Phil, but it's got four L's. Um, <laughs> and three uh, so yeah, Wrestle <laughs> WrestleMania. I I really enjoyed the show of it, but mm. it was that it was at an age where I didn't realise that it was just masking fiction. Oh, and as soon as I found out, I just wasn't interested in it. And this is my this is actually quite salient. If F1 gets to the point where it becomes anything even vaguely like that, where they're just artificially manufacturing the sport to enhance the show, mm. then that's, I think, where I check out. <clears throat> because I, lo- I love all the nonsense around F1. Let's face it, we've based the entire podcast on the nonsense rather than the racing. But it's got to have the racing as a solid backdrop. And if we lose that, then I have no interest in it. Mm. Wow, that's well, you just asked me about WrestleMania. You ruined that one. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah WrestleMania is a, is a case in point as far as I'm concerned. Uh, my, you guys view, still love it. my view on professional wrestling is that I love, <coughs> I love speaking to fans of wrestling because you know, I just, I just like speaking to stupid people. <laughs> <right now. laughs> well, I surround myself with intelligent people, Thank and you. we talk about philosophy and shit mm. like that. Mm. And someone comes to me and says, I like the wrestling. I'm like, I will give you five minutes of my time. <laughs> yes. Little, little thicky. <laughs> Come on then, you dimwit. Well, little thicky, <laughs> actually, of course, was very much involved in the Royal Rumble in 1997. <laughs> I have no view to express on this whatsoever. Wrestling was a thing that was around, and I remember some of the names, like British Bulldog that you mentioned, and Hulk Hogan. Ultimate Warrior. I, you know, I didn't. The, you I, know, the didn't Ultimate you have to Warrior. have like Sky and and stuff to watch it? I didn't I have that. Just, as a we kid. Bought, the, bought the VHSs and I watched it around mates' houses. Nah, I better okay, spend spies. the money. I didn't did. You know that in in Spain, the Ultimate Warrior was called El Hypo Hypo. Yeah, see, that's stuff I don't care about. Yeah. So it is a fun fact. I had a comedy agent when I was a stand-up comedian. I had an agent who mm. I'm going to say allegedly, but he ripped me off for thousands of pounds, and. <laughs> I later found out he went. He left comedy to become a wrestling promoter, and if that doesn't say everything, <laughs> <laughs> I once got told by a security guard on the subway in Dubai that I looked like Brett the Hitman Hart. Listeners, I, I do is. not look like Brett the Hitman Hart. So I want to Google just, that now. It's one of the most surprising things that I think ever happened to me. I did not Brett, know how to take that. One minute. Brett the Hitman. What the? F- no, you look yeah, nothing yeah. like him. I mean, I was wearing oh. that outfit, but you do have the same nipples. I do. You, yeah. You've got the same slight scowl. Yeah. Um, should we move on to another question? Whose go is it? Is it mine? You. Is it's it? Yours. Yeah. You. Uh, okay, Ray Glennon. This is a long one. Alonso now has the same number of points as Russell and more than twice as many as Hamilton. Were Mercedes to lose their minds and offer Alonso a seat, uh, is there any reason for him to prefer them over Aston Martin at this point? Uh, this is the kind of question that sounds like you've got to answer this to get across a bridge. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> what kind of swallow? <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> if a box is blue, <laughs> it's, it's really complicated. <laughs> Should we read it again? Because I'm really confused. I am in tree, but not in sky. <laughs> Alonso now has the same number of points as Russell, and more than twice as many as Hamilton. Were Mercedes to lose their minds enough Roger Reynolds' seat, is there even a reason for him to prefer them over Aston Martin at this point? And who would arrive in Edinburgh first? <laughs> um, very quickly. I would take Mercedes over Aston Martin just because they're a works team. And Aston Martin, although they're, theoretically they're a works team, mm. they're not really. From a fan point of view, a lot to a Mercedes, absolutely fucking yes. <laughs> I mean, it would be hilarious. Jesus Christ, yes. Yes, yes, and thrice yes. I would give away everything I owned. <laughs> Which is not much. Let's do a couple of quick ones then. Phil, uh, Terry, whoever it is. It's me. Or maybe Terry. Super quick ones. 
All right, I'll pick one. Alfie Wicks, Alfie Wilkes underscore twenty two says, "Why do we even bother?" Money. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's why we do it for all yeah. the money we get from this podcast. Fucking rolling in it, mate. I just bought the Maltese. What about you guys? I bought a Malteser. <laughs> I have got some higher purchase on a Malteser. <laughs> Very good, it's very who, good interest rates. Who, who earns the most? Producer Matt. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's got a jet. Uh, Terry, last question. Lotta Backlund says, Max V supposedly said Fernando is too old for Red Bull. What is a good age? That's actually what quite an interesting What is a good age? I mean, good, a good, good, age? age for, good age for what? Dave well, I'm 44. Pres- I presume driving an F1 car. I'm 44, I wouldn't recommend it. I enjoyed 30 and 31. Like, I 27. Yeah, that, that was a good age. 27 uh, was my best year. I was too thick at 27. No, I, 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 really know. I hadn't got the hang of things at oh, 27. I was at the peak of my career. It was Early 30s, there. I reckon. I, I nearly just got nominated about... for a Perrier Award. Yeah, but you were, you? you were a high flyer. Did you was, get like was, free water and stuff? Early. I was longlisted. It wasn't called Perrier by then, but I was longlisted for it. I thought that was the start of my career. Now look at me. Nothing. It was. Oh. Now look at you now. Yeah. You're on the internet. Um, oh, well I'm in a Bond film. Hardly anyone on the internet. You're doing really well on the I think early 30s, where I, I just about got the hang of life. Yeah. But my body hadn't started to fall apart. Yeah. I think and then you had the... kids, and then it all goes wrong then, doesn't it? In retrospect, terrible mistake, although I do love my daughter very much. Yeah, that's the weird thing about kids, isn't it? You love yeah, them. you don't want to get rid of them, but you would like to change your life back to a bit of <laughs> <laughs> Also, I just remember talking about... Sorry, I know you're talking... You're, you're, you, go, you two have a lovely moment there. We're just having a parent about. podcast. See you later. I'm going to go back to my comedy career. So I dined out for years because someone told me I got long... Because they don't publish the long list, but someone told me in the know, in the industry, that I was on the long list for that year. So, you know, I was... Ten, like I just said to you, you know, I dropped it in conversation. Oh, yeah, sure. I was longlisted. And then years later, I met someone who was on the panel that year and uh, a social event... And we got introduced, and I thought he'd say, "Oh, I know you," because long, and he didn't know who I was. And I'm just like, oh, "Maybe I was never longlisted." Or well, how many just, people were on the longlist? Yeah, you just brought out that Time Out article that you carry in your wallet, and just like, it's yeah, everyone on the uh, everyone that submitted an entry, they're they're all on the long list. <laughs> they're just oh. all just all on it. It's just a big list of names. It is called long. <laughs> Anyway, thanks for your questions. Uh, coming up after the ad break, it's Phil Trayman's Grand Prix preview. Woo. Remember, you can listen ad free at the Whingy Mustache, our new subscription. Just sign up through Apple Podcasts, head to our page, and you'll see a link to join. Or you can just say thanks for all the content by donating a one off pint or three to us at ff1s.com forward slash pint pint pint. And now. Perhaps with some cliché Chinese music and the sound of Kung Fu, it's time for the FF1S Grand Prix Preview with Phil Tromans. (laughs) Ni hao, bitches, and welcome back to the Chinese Grand Prix. (laughs) Too much? No, great. I enjoyed it. Oh, there's going to be yeah. a thing every year. I'm going to try and learn how to say hello in the language of the place we're going to. So get used to it, fuckers. I'm enjoying it. I didn't know it was Nihao Bitches. Nihao. I thought it was Nihao. Oh, yeah, it, Nihao. in retrospect, I now understand when I went to China why everyone looked at me weird. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, how we've missed the Chinese Grand Prix. And nothing says I'm back like the first fucking sprint race of the year. Ugh. It's been five years since the last Chinese Grand Prix, thanks to a little pandemic that started just a stone's throw away from the Shanghai International Circuit. Well, around 750 kilometres away, but what can I say? I've got a good arm. This year marks the 20th anniversary of the opening of the track, which is owned by the Chinese state and conceived to show off the city, in just the way that we now criticise the Middle Eastern countries for doing. This was sport washing before it was cool, but once a race has been established for long enough, we don't care quite so much. However, China today ranks 149th on the Human Freedom Index, placing it a whole eight places ahead of Saudi Arabia, making it a relative bastion of freedom. Just don't mention Taiwan, or the Uyghurs, or Hong Kong, or Tibet or LGBTQ rights, or democracy. (laughs) Phil Facts. There have been 16 Chinese Grand Prix, and more than half of them have been won by drivers on the grid this weekend. Lewis Hamilton has six wins, Fernando Alonso has two, and Daniel Ricciardo has one. The last Chinese Grand Prix was won by Hamilton, and the one before that was won by Ricciardo back when he was good. 
Safe to say that neither of these drivers will win this year's event, but perhaps one of them, by which we mean Hamilton, could get close to the race lap record, currently 1 minute 32.238 set by Michael Schumacher at the inaugural event in 2004. The Grand Prix takes place over 56 laps of the 5.451 km Shanghai International Circuit. The sprint race on Saturday is over less than 56 laps, but finding out how many was surprisingly difficult and I gave up trying through lack of enthusiasm. It's also on at 4 in the fucking morning UK wow. time. Yeah, no thanks F1. Jesus. The Grand Prix is at least on at 8 a.m., which is relatively civilized. That's enough time to make a coffee, prepare some shredded duck and egg foo young, and settle down to watch the first corner that goes on forever, after which Max Verstappen will be off into the distance. Our only hope is that, with just one free practice session before sprint qualifying and a whole five years since the last race, no one has any useful data to set their car up properly. Maybe, just maybe, things might just be unpredictable. Look, we can dream. Oh. Hey now, hey now, don't, don't dream, dream if it's over. over. What a fucking song. That was lovely, guys. I enjoyed that. Um, yeah, no, well, that that actually sounds quite promising if it could be interesting and unpredictable. I like Four in the um, morning for a sprint race. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah, that's too early. I, I yeah. mean, I pride myself at getting up to watch Grand Prix, but even I don't think I'm going to do that. The thing is, when, now they've made 28 races a year, whatever it is. I just I don't care about missing one line. Uh, I mean, I this s- is the problem I they've s- done I with. They've diluted of, it. I sort of do, but do I want to get up at four in the morning to watch a fucking sprint race? But when there used to be sixteen races and like three of them were on early, it was a special occasion. Yeah. Now I just feel like I'm being water tortured. Exa- no, exactly. <laughs> it used to be like a, a a highlight. It was like sort of you know going camping when you were a kid or something. It's like oh, I'm going to get up in the night to watch the no, Japanese it's, it's Grand like, Prix. No, it's like when you're a kid and you have to you have to get up at a stupid time to go to the airport because you're going to Disneyland. I imagine I never went to Disneyland as a kid. We we were very poor, but I, that's what I'm told it's like by my rich friends. But it's like that. So when you're a kid, it's exciting going to the airport. But when you're an adult, do you want to go to the fucking airport at three in the morning? No, you fucking don't. No, yeah, I, I know exactly. What I you know mean. book flights for like two o'clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah lunchtime one. Yeah, yeah. that's more sensible. Yeah. You can have a pint at the airport. Oh, I mean, you do that anyway. I've been at the uh, airport uh, at four uh, in the morning at that point. True. Is it, is it true then that the Michael Schumacher thing then? So he set the lap record in the yeah, first nobody's race. Nobody's gone faster since, and no then. one's beaten it. No, I mean the that cars seems were mad faster. to me. The cars were pretty fast back then. Still, I though. think like t- last race a couple of years ago. Like I think it's Gasly who had the fastest one in the last race or somebody, and it was like two seconds off the lap record. So, right. Progress and also. Like for, I mean, I think it's changing now because when they did the rule change a few years ago to make the cars quicker. But for a while, nearly all of the lap records were just held by Montoya because he had that. The was it the Williams BMW that was just fast, mm. and so and the power of the that. Colombians. Well, don't <laughs> knock it. Stay away from the power of the Colombians. If you... power or the powder, <laughs> either <laughs> one letter, <laughs> it's a very different meaning. <laughs> yeah, they all end up at the same place. That's it from us. We'll be back next week when we'll be looking back at the Chinese Grand Prix with the hope against hope that something interesting happened that didn't involve too much oppression. In the meantime, check out our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash for F1 sake and follow us on Twitter at for F1 sake. Oh, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel, please, to see what you've just heard in full HD. If you're already watching, then hi. Hello. Thank you, wave. Terry, wave. Go on. Terry, wait. (laughs) (laughs) Like and subscribe, please. Thank you. Type in for F1's sake to all the usual platforms and see what comes up. Terry, where can people buy merch? Um, FF1S.com. Thanks for listening. I've been Ollie Pitt. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yep.